In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts and data to help us answer the question, is the market set up for a sharp reversal? We'll be moving quickly, so feel free to use the pause button on your video player. As we covered in last week's video, it's very easy to get stuck on one or two particular stories related to the path of Fed policy, interest rates, and the economy, but common sense tells us there's an almost infinite number of outcomes. Thus, it might be helpful to review a concept from the power of now. The psychological condition of fear is divorced from any concrete and true immediate danger. It comes in many forms, unease, worry, anxiety, nervousness, tension, dread, phobia, and so on. This kind of psychological fear is always of something that might happen, not something that is happening now. There are always things to be concerned about in the markets and we don't want to downplay the seriousness of some of the concerns that we face in the present day related to interest rates, the Fed, the economy, and in the short run, the debt limit talks. These are all legitimate concerns that we should respect. It's very possible that very bad things are going to happen very, very soon. However, as noted in a recent Seeking Alpha article about the debt ceiling standoff in 2011, ultimately, market sell-offs are based on a tipping point between the acceptance of risk and risk aversion. Thus, between the debt ceiling, the Fed, interest rates, and the economy, it's extremely important for us to continue to monitor the charts and data in an unbiased manner. So let's do that now. We've all heard and seen data sets relative to concerning market breadth. And for the most part, that's an undeniable fact. But it's also an undeniable fact that the S&P 500 has been consolidating above some very, very important levels. The anchored volume weighted average price line tied to the October low. We're above the same line tied to the 2022 peak. The market made a stand near a logical level here just before the new year based on the COVID high and the COVID low. So walking forward, it's probably best not to worry about what might happen. Let's focus on what is happening. And right now, the chart in front of us says buyers remain in control. And we're probably better off trying to do less rather than more, especially as it relates to volatility, as long as the S&P 500 can hold above 4080, and more importantly, hold above 3830. 3973 is the anchored volume weighted average price line tied to the October low, also a very important level. On May 19th at 1118 a.m. Eastern Time, the S&P was trading at 4,200 and change. Another chart that offsets some of the legitimate concerns related to market breadth. This is not a typo here. This is the S&P 1500. It too has been consolidating above important levels. Concerns would increase if price moves into this area, and they would increase significantly if price moved into this area down here. And that may happen. It may happen very, very soon with all the concerns that we're dealing with in 2023, but it hasn't happened yet. Given where inflation is today and where the unemployment rate is today, history says it's unlikely that the Fed is going to be cutting rates anytime soon, something that we have to respect from a bearish probability perspective. The chart on your screen was on Urban Carmel's Twitter feed. Here's the Twitter handle down here. It's the federal government's interest expense as a percentage of gross domestic product. And you can see it's been rising lately. However, we're not anywhere near these levels in the 1980 to 1990 window. And if you know your stock market history, stock market did pretty well from point A to point B. Thus, viewing this in isolation, not a showstopper. And how about the secular trend thesis, something that we've talked about numerous times in these videos over the past several years from Yuri and Timmer, Fidelity. The current secular bull market, which began in 2009, seems like the 1949 to 1968 run, basically saying we're 14 years in. This is what happened historically walking forward for several years. If we move 14 years forward from 1949, it takes us 
to the early stages of 1963 down here. What happened in the S&P 500? From point A to point B, it gained approximately 45. And from point A to point C, it gained approximately 80%. This chart spans from 1963 here all the way to 1973 on the right side, and it begins in 1960. Here's the full version of the Fidelity chart. And from a secular trend perspective, the S&P 500 recently bottomed in October at a very logical level, an upward sloping 50 month moving average, basically the exact same place where the secular bull market bottomed at the COVID low. This is the chart in front of us. This is May 19th at 10.51 a.m. Eastern Time. Price is above an upward sloping 50 month moving average. Source of the chart up here, upper left-hand corner of your screen. It was on Mark's Twitter feed. Here's the Twitter handle here. This is more than 200 years of interest rates in the United States. This is 1980 here. This general area here from 1981. Interest rates were falling. We have a break of that trend line and a lot of evidence that tells us it's possible. The future will look quite a bit different relative to the rearview mirror which tells us that we need to be flexible about everything in terms of our experience in the markets. It's possible a lot of correlations that we've grown accustomed to already have begun to shift, all to be determined. It's also possible that the returns for the 60-40 portfolio will be disappointing relative to what investors experienced in this very favorable window here. In terms of keeping an open mind about better than expected outcomes, long-term cycles, 2023, a good time to buy assets. 2026 and 2034, a good time to sell assets. The distance in years between 2023 and 2034 tells us we should keep an open mind about better than expected long-term outcomes, which is what we're concerned about. And how could good things happen? Liquidity. Liquidity is rising. Another fair question. What could cause the market to push higher than expected in the coming weeks and months? What could cause it to finally break above the 4200 level? If the expectations for imminent gloom and doom are off, a lot of this defensive positioning over here, overweights in defensive bonds, consumer staples, cash, utilities, and healthcare. Underweights, basically U.S. equities are a big one. Still carrying an underweight to tech as well. During Friday's session and after Powell's remarks, the market was still placing roughly an 80% probability for the Fed to pause in June. Obviously, all of this will shift numerous times between now and the next meeting date, which is June 14th. Why are global fund managers so defensively positioned? Because they believe a recession is imminent or that we're already in one. Thus, we've got numerous ways to keep our eye on the important recession data. And if you were to review that data this week, objectively, there's really nothing in front of us today. And that's the key. There's nothing in front of us today that is screaming imminent recession. And that's subject to change. But we could have said the same thing six days ago, six weeks ago, and six months ago. So let's not make any assumptions and let's just stay in the now. It's impossible to cover all of these charts in detail, so we're using a weight of the evidence approach. If you want to look at the charts in more detail, use the pause button on your video player. Sentiment, four week moving average. Present day looks similar to the 1990 to 1991 window. That's near a major low in the S&P 500. The only other period dating back to 1987, and we're using all of the data that we have, is after the major low in 2009 in this window here. Doesn't predict anything, it just speaks to sentiment. And if you don't like to use moving averages and you just wanna look at the raw data, it's very, very rare for investors to be this pessimistic in 1990, this pessimistic in 2009, and this pessimistic in 2022. 
Dow advanced decline line. Market made a stand down here October of last year. Made a stand here March of this year. We're back to the same general area and what once acted as resistance, what once acted as resistance may now act as support. We have seen some small and incremental improvement in new highs and new lows. There is still work to do. We want the present day chart of NASDAQ new lows as a percent of total issues. We want it to look more like this or this. Right now we're hovering around 4%. Now that is similar to the bottoming process in 2003. This is a retest here, but there's work to be done here. Covered this breath signal last year in a video in November and said it had not fired yet in a positive manner as it did in the 70s, the 80s, etc. after major lows. That is not the case anymore. The signal fired in 2023. Plus, something that just happened in 2023 aligns with some pretty bullish periods in stock market history. When we jump up to this level here, after being down here, it's only happened a handful of times going back to 1967. Stock market on average was 10% higher a year later, 26% higher three years later, and approximately 57% higher five years later with relatively muted drawdowns. And not surprisingly, this signal was fired in February of this year when the S&P 500 was trading at 4147 and change. We've already undercut the average and median drawdown. The lowest close that we've had is below these two levels at 3855. That aligns with the, we're in a different world. We've had that happen numerous times relative to breath signals. Ones that were generated after the June low into that August high, the breath thrusts that were generated in January, and this one that was generated in February. But with the benefit of hindsight now, all of those signals are still intact and still appear to be relevant. And we're starting to break out of some of those consolidation periods, telling us we should keep an open mind about all of those signals still being relevant. That's to be determined. We should also respect the message from the drawdowns that have been larger than history would suggest. Flexible and unbiased. But these numbers here, they look pretty good. Here's an example of the incremental and subtle improvement in NASDAQ new highs, new lows. Way down here in March, around negative 600. This week, we've been able to poke our head a couple of times above the zero line. Still need to see more here, but this is better than this, and it's better than this. NASDAQ 100 up down volume, trying to make a stand near a logical area. Similar situation with the S&P 500. This is the COVID high here. If you're a stock market bear, you really like to get down here. 100% of this week's video is being recorded on Friday afternoon. Many of the charts are dated Thursday, May 18th. Covered this many times. Weekly momentum continues to distance itself from the look in 08 and 2002. There's a lot of ways to look at that. This is PPO. This is the true strength index. This is 2003 after the major low. This is 09 after a major low. This is 2016 after a major low. And this is the present day on the 18th, well above the zero line. Very long-term trend in the NASDAQ. Very difficult to look at this chart and say anything other than that the market is trying to make a stand here in Q4 of last year at a very logical level with momentum turning up in a constructive manner. If we look at this chart objectively, and I believe we said something similar last week, there's really just not much on this chart that's concerning, and there's quite a bit that's constructive. Weekly MACD above the zero line. Couldn't do that all of last year. When did that happen in 2020? After the major COVID low. It's a weekly chart. This is Thursday. This is more like it. This is NASDAQ RSI, weekly RSI at Thursday's close at 63. Better than 57 here. Better than 56 or 57 here. And better than 59 and change here in 2015. It speaks to improving probabilities. 
covered this chart many times. It still looks good relative to CCI. In the early stages of a trend, this type of quote unquote overbought level can be constructive. The longer it holds, the more relevant it becomes. On Thursday, we cleared one, two, three, four important levels. If we look at this chart objectively, look at the moving averages here, look at the consolidation in here, look at volume by price here, look at this air pocket here. If we were taking a multiple choice test, there's no possible way you could pick any other answer other than this is a constructive look. Doesn't predict anything. Speaks to odds. And we've got a near vertical look here. Is it possible even if good things happen that we need to come back and consolidate? Sure, it's possible. So is a failed breakout. It's the weekly chart as of Thursday's close. Been consolidating. This looks different than anything that we've seen for the most part in 2023. If you're familiar with clouds, checking all bearish boxes on the weekly cloud in October of last year. Now we're checking all bullish boxes. Lagging span above price, yes. Blue above red, yes. Price above red, yes. Has the cloud morphed from red to green, yes. We are lacking one box. Price has not cleared the cloud. Regardless, significant improvement, observable improvement relative to what we had in October and even in December here. Pause your video player. This is the Dow Jones U.S. Growth Stock Index. This is what momentum looks like, weekly momentum after the major low in 2009. This is what momentum looks like after the major low in 2009. Notice the white space in here. This is what momentum looks like in 2008 when really bad things were happening. This is what momentum looks like today. And here's some white space today. Here, we failed to make a stand at the 200-week moving average. Thus far, we've made a stand at the 200-week moving average. Dow Jones Industrial Average Weekly still consolidating in a constructive manner. Concerns would increase if we moved into this area here. NASDAQ 100 monthly, 10-month moving average in blue, 40-month in red. Compare the bear market look here.com, the bear market look in 08 to the present day, and now compare the present day to what this chart looks like after the major low in 2009 and after the major low in 02 and the retest in 03. Bottom indicator is NASDAQ 100 stocks greater than their 200-day moving average. Dot-com bus bear market. When you went from the lower blue lines to the upper blue line, the low was in. Financial crisis bear market. Once you hit the lower blue lines, you didn't hit it anywhere in here. So this is your oversold reading in 08. And then you return to the upper dotted blue line here. The major low was in the rear view mirror. We have moved from that rare oversold reading back to this line. We've covered this in the past. When price crosses over blue, the low was in. Price crosses over blue, it was over. Present day, price is above blue and red and above an upward sloping green cloud. This is Thursday's close. A lot of good things happening here. Made a stand at an upward sloping 200 week. We're above a downward sloping trend line here and above some key levels. We'll learn something if we can hold this breakout. And we'll learn something about being patient if we move into this area. And we'll learn something about possibly having to take some defensive action if we drop below this region here. NASDAQ 100 weekly cloud. Back here in 2022, we're checking all bearish boxes. In the present day, all bullish boxes, including Price during Thursday's session above what is now a green weekly cloud. This is what weekly RSI has looked like. We've been waiting for it to improve. As of Thursday's close, you have to admit this looks quite a bit better than anything that we've seen in here. And it looks better than this reading. And it looks better than this maximum reading here during this counter trend move in 2008. Thursday session, we're sitting at 66.82. Obviously, it's a weekly chart, and Friday's close is the relevant number. Next leg down in the bear market, 
next leg down in the bear market, present day. NYSE advanced decline issues made a stand here near the October low, made a stand here right before the market started to rally in January of 2023, made a stand here, stocks made a stand, trying to make a stand at a logical level on May 18th. Mega cap S&P 100 index. This looks different relative to this, and we've cleared numerous levels that acted as support or resistance in the past, and price is above an upward sloping 50-day moving average. Triple Qs this week. Buyers in control with this type of look. This is Triple Qs in isolation here, where my cursor is. The bigger chart is QQQ relative to SPY. You can make an argument. This is your left shoulder. This is your head. And this is a shallow and bullish looking right shoulder. You have a break above the neckline this week as the 250 day moving average in black is trying to turn up, as well as the 200 day moving average in mustard here. Full bore bearish look over here. Can we visualize a full bore bullish look in the present day? We can. We've moved a long way on a relative basis in a short period of time, so some consolidation here wouldn't be shocking. This is the ISO chart. If we look at the relative chart, also shows buyers in control. S&P 500 weekly cloud. If you're a stock market bull, you'd prefer to see more white space between this red cloud and price. But no question, we've seen a lot of incremental improvement. Tight cluster of moving averages. That's a 50 day in blue all the way out to the 200 day in orange. We could get a big move in this direction, or if we fail, concerns would increase significantly if we drop below 3,900. Thursday's close right around 4,200 during the session on Friday, May 19th, still trading right around 4,200, significantly higher than 3,900. We've covered this in the past moving average envelopes. Still a constructive look with this white space here and price above the upper blue line. 2008 here. Does this over here look different from this? And how does this right here look relative to this and this? And does momentum on the monthly chart trying to turn up above zero, does that look different relative to 2008? been consolidating for several weeks and we get a very very the highest cci reading that we've seen going back to january 1st of 2022 on the s p 500's daily chart you can read the little blurb here from stockcharts.com stochastic rsi constructive white space here on momentum standard rsi still has a nice look in here and still in an upward sloping channel o2 08 present day looks different white space down here on momentum weekly cloud pivot at 4050 we're trading above that on may 19th top of the cloud here around 4155 ish 4160 ish trading above that during the session on may 19th longer above more relevant it becomes if you zoomed in here you can see weekly rsi trying to make a stand above the dotted line 55 55 ish 54 ish almost 59 on thursday if you're a stock market bull you'd really like to fill up some of this white space we're trying to do that we're trading above 4136 during the trading session on the afternoon late in the session on may 19th that would be constructive covered a lot of breath thrust signals in the february 10th video this was the average and median drawdown. You can see the market did overshoot as it has several times on these type of signals in recent months. However, it did make a stand and we're well above the typical drawdown band here. And we're above what is now an upward sloping 30 week moving average in blue. And we're above the 40 week and the 50 week. You can read this little blurb right here speaks to probabilities it's been rough it's been volatile but right now it's still looking pretty constructive if we review it objectively does the present day look more like this period here in the year 2000 
more like this period here in 2008 or more like this period here in 03 and this period here in 09 and or this period here after the major low in 2016 or after the major low in 2020. Here's the look in the present day. This is the VIX last year in the orange box during the bear market. This is the VIX here in the present day. This is a good visual how weekly clouds have improved dramatically. Alphabet batting O for 5 on the weekly cloud on October 28th, 2022 chart we covered last year. How does the exact same chart look today? How many of these boxes can we check today? As of the close on May 18th, the answer to that question is zero. We can't check any of those boxes anymore. The daily cloud, similar situation. Price consolidating down here for several months, trying to sustain a bullish breakout above a green daily cloud and above a green weekly cloud. You can think of this as cash or a money market fund type instrument relative to the stock market. Again, if we review the evidence and stay in the now, what's happening now? What's happening now is this chart looks a lot more favorable for the stock market bulls than it did at any time in here going back to January of 2022. And that includes weekly MACD that is firmly below the zero line. Covered this earlier in 2023. This is the look after the major low in 09. This is the very similar look in 2023, and it looks quite a bit different than 2022. You can read the tweet here from May 6th. Here's the Twitter handle. Here's the look of the chart on Thursday. Still looks different. Apple is an incredibly important stock. Does the weekly cloud look better relative to what it looked like in December of last year? The answer is absolutely positively yes. Weekly momentum still constructive. Robotics and artificial intelligence, aka AI ETF. Nice looking pattern above the downward sloping trend line. 250 day moving average trying to turn up. And pause your video player here. Talked about this in the past. If we were going to go into a horrible global recession, this is typically what risk off looks like. This is what the present day looks like. There's a monthly chart, EFA foreign developed stocks relative to intermediate term treasuries. This is a constructive look. You can compare it to bearish looks and bullish looks in the past. We've been bouncing around a little bit, but still batting five for five on the weekly. Limited sample size, but typically when you get sideways consolidation here, and then you break out in 2016, and then you break out here in 2017, and you can look at the other cases, typically that type of consolidation and then pushing to a new high is good for risk assets. It's a diversified basket of one to five year bonds relative to the S&P 500. This is what fear looks like January of 2022. This is where the S&P 500 bottoms in October of last year. And this is the discernibly different look and trend that we have walking forward from that October low. And this is the look of that chart below all of the moving averages with blue, the fastest moving average in the bottom. This is how it looked on Thursday of this week. This is more of an economic fear look. This is the present day. Another way to talk about market breadth, the broad Russell 1000 speaks to participation and breadth. Russell 1000 growth relative to IEF or intermediate term treasuries. This is what risk on looks like after the retest in 03. This is what risk on looks like in 09. This is what risk off looks like. This is what risk off looks like last year. Here's the rally in January of this year. Just made a new multiple month high in this ratio. Prices above all of the moving averages and blew the fastest moving averages on top. This is 2016 after the major low in the S&P 500. If you know your market history, the S&P 500 bottomed in February of 2016 and rallied until January of 2018. This is the look in the present day, tech relative to the S&P 500, 
a constructive look back above an upward sloping 50 month moving average, you can make an argument, there's your left shoulder, there's your head, and there's your right shoulder, and we're above the neckline. Possible we need to consolidate in here? Sure, it's possible. Very similar look for QQQ relative to the S&P 500. If you're a stock market bull, you'd really like to see the equal weight S&P 500 improve a little bit. It hasn't done so yet, but it hasn't broken down yet either. You can pause your video player here. When the ratio made a stand, S&P, ratio made a stand, S&P, trying to make a stand in a similar area. This is the other side of that coin, SP low volatility relative to SPY. You can see there's a breakdown here. We're below a tight cluster of moving averages that are rolling over. We've covered this chart many times in the past. I believe there's a little blurb about it on our Twitter feed as well. You can find more about XLK versus IEF on our Twitter feed. There's a tweet dated May 7th, right down here. This is what fear of inflation, interest rates, and the Fed looks like, right over here. 2022. This is what this week looks like, May 18th, the close. May 18th, tech versus gold. 7 to 10 year treasuries, similar situation when we look at 3 to 7 year treasuries. XLK, price above blue and red, bear market is over 2003. XLK, price above blue and red, bear market is over in 2009. XLK on May 18th, above blue and red and above an upward sloping monthly cloud. There's monthly momentum down here. We're turning up above zero. What does that tell you? In terms of momentum in its present form, this is a counter trend move or consolidation within an existing uptrend. Ratio trying to make a stand at a logical level. You can see it a little bit more clearly here. This chart is also on our Twitter feed, at Shabako Capital. XLK relative to SPY daily over here. This is 2022. This is your downward sloping trend line. Step one, we break a trend line. Step two, we make a higher low here where my cursor is relative to these lows down here. And step three for a probabilistic trend change just happened. Printed a higher high. It's a nice looking breakout here. We also know we've had a lot of failed breakouts lately, so let's just see what happens with an open mind. This is a great look right here. Look at this candle. This is as of Thursday's close, but XLK was basically flat on Friday, so no big change. Very long term period of consolidation. Defensive XLP relative to XLK. This is the look after the major low in 2016. This is the present day here. Remember the stock market looked really, really good right up until that NFP report that was released on Friday, February 3rd. Then the market's been confused. It doesn't look as confused anymore. This is XLV, defensive XLV relative to SPY. Similar situation with defensive utilities relative to SPY. Confused for several weeks, doesn't look as confused anymore. If we examine, which we just did, what is happening now from an economic perspective and an asset class behavior perspective, it's still very difficult to make the case that we're currently in a recession or one is imminent. There are some cracks, but nothing major still. And that doesn't align with expectations and defensive positioning. Thus, more upside is possible. This is basically a form of sentiment. Had a lot of things to be concerned about this week, including during Friday's session. Had a walkout from the debt ceiling talks, and Powell made public remarks, and basically all he talked about was inflation. And yet, given all that, the S&P 500 finished the week up 68 points. I think it's probably fair to say that Inflation is the bigger concern right now based on the charts in front of us and the data that we have in hand relative to the imminent recession fear. If that's true, it's not optimal to be loaded up on bonds at this point. That may be a good thing later, but right now that's not really what the charts are telling us. And that's not my opinion. You can look at this chart here and you can look at this chart here. This is what's happening now. It's fair to say some of the things that we've been waiting for on the weekly charts, they're starting to happen. S&P is still trading around 4,200, so we have to respect that we're still in a range concept. Charts in front of us remain constructive. 
And at this point, we have absolutely positively no idea what our next moves are going to be. The market and the charts and the data will dictate that, including choosing the do-nothing alternative. Doing nothing is a move. It's always an option. We did clear some important hurdles this week. 4,200 is another hurdle. Debt ceiling, inflation, Fed, economic concerns, all relevant. And that was true a week ago. What happened this week? The S&P was up 68 points. Still very possible that a recession is in the cards. It's the timing that's questionable. And if the recession doesn't come until Q3 to Q2 of next year, is it possible that the S&P 500 makes a run maybe as high as 4,800? Of course it's possible. And if a recession is in the cards, it's highly unlikely that the charts that we covered this week will look like they do today. And that tells us something about recession probabilities and the timing of a potential recession. There's a lot of gloom and doom out there. The charts have done some really, really good things. Is everything perfect? No, it's rarely perfect. Having said that, the constructive and somewhat fragile state of the market those constructive charts can shift at any time. And that may begin on Monday morning. It just hasn't happened yet. Think about how difficult this cycle has been from a forecasting and timing perspective. It's probably fair to say if we meticulously pay attention with an open mind, we're better off than trying to forecast the timing of all of these moving parts. Thus, it's best to take it day by day with an open mind about a wide range of outcomes. Sometimes it seems like it's forgotten that the S&P 500 already got hammered. It was down approximately 27% at one point last year. So even if we get a mild recession, it's possible the markets already priced that in. Remember, this cycle has been skewed by all of the money printing and all of the checks that were sent out in the mail globally. Thus, it's very, very possible that this 27% decline is all that we need to deal with whatever economic weakness is ahead. That is not a prediction. It's just a reminder that the cycle is off. This is a pretty bad outcome if you're concerned about an inverted yield curve. This is pretty rare. It's already happened. You may remember earlier in the video, we noted that ultimately market sell-offs are based on a tipping point between the acceptance of risk and risk aversion. Common sense tells us that charts can't predict the future. And many believe that charts only show us what has already happened. And there's absolutely some truth to that concept. But what many miss is the charts help us understand what's happening right now. Do the charts in front of us look like we've reached one of those all important tipping points? If the answer is yes, then bearish probabilities will start to increase. Thus, given the complexities of the present day market puzzle, the concept of staying in the now rather than worrying about what has happened or what might happen is probably more important than ever. And we all know the only way that we can do that effectively is if we head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, an open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates, or clients, may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.